Hello, you people out there in TV land. My name is Jason Voorhees, also known as CB Studios, also known as Kurt. And uh, I had a thought last week that, well, it's real easy to breathe in a hockey mask. And that's a really dumb thought. Why would I think that? That's a really dumb thought. And why would I think that? Why would I think that breathing easily was uh, a bad thing? How could I think something so dumb? This is just a really long way of saying that I couldn't think of an appropriate intro uh, for this video. And so today, you're going to come with me on a journey. A journey of creation, a journey of making, and possibly even a little bit of a pseudo-tutorial. I received this brilliant, absolutely fantastic Part 7 Jason Voorhees hockey mask from my friend Chris over in the United States. It's a resin cast hockey mask cast from the original part 7 hockey mask so it does have screen lineage and Chris did this amazing flawless gorgeous paint job for it. Uh, it's absolutely perfect. I couldn't do anywhere near as good as this. Uh, I have done the leather straps on it but really it's just been a hockey mask and what is a hockey mask without something behind it? I've wanted to do a Jason costume for quite a while now. In fact, over the pandemic, I did start a Jason X costume, a part 10 Jason, uh, that I got kind of far into, but then stopped. And I've always thought, with the skills of mask making and latex work that I can do, uh, maybe I should try my hand at making a Jason mask. And so, today, we're going to do one. I'm going to show you my process on making a part 7 Jason mask. Now, this is going to be mostly time-lapse, uh, purely because I work in a very specific way, and it's not always the easiest way for me to record, especially when I'm doing something as creative as this. So, what I'm going to show you today is the process, an overview of sorts, of how I would sculpt something in plasticine, so an oil-based clay, how I would then mold it with a two-part hydrocal mold, and how I would cast and finish up a latex mask. So the overall goal here is to do a full head latex Jason mask. And by overall goal, I mean, uh, I already did it. <laughs> I have, it's done. Uh, I'm filming this afterwards. And so I'm going to show you how to turn a lump of plasticine on a life cast of me into this chunky, gooey, gorgeous piece. Let's check it out. All right. So we're in time lapse, which means you get some voiceover. What I'm doing at the moment is I'm using small little blobs of plasticine and I'm doing a process called blocking. And this is basically just getting the general shape and proportions of the face and head right. Uh, allows me to get the overall vibe of the piece before I start roughing in any sort of detail or anything like that. It's really important to make sure that the proportions match what you need. Once I've got the shapes roughly blocked out and got those proportions kind of in the right place, I'll start going through and refining the larger shapes and larger details and landmarks a little bit more, and then work further in and try and get the detail nice. Once the sculpt's at a place where I like, it's now onto the scariest part, and that's molding. I'm using a white hydrocal plaster here, and I'm brushing on a thin layer to capture all the detail, called a print coat. And this is a nice thin layer, gets into all the details, and I slowly mix up thicker and thicker batches, filling in deep cavities like the eye socket and those top gashes, and making sure that I've got a nice even layer over the whole thing. We go thicker and thicker, and more and more, reinforcing with burlap or hessian, to try and get that nice, rigid, strong mold. This is gonna to cure to a rock solid plaster mold, and it's gonna be a two part. So we're starting the second part now, so the back of the head. This will allow me to crack it off and probably dislocate my shoulder while I try and demold this. And uh, yeah, should be left with a nice, rigid mold once I'm done. Fingers, fingers crossed. So I've demolded this off camera, mainly because of who I am as a person and you don't need to see me dislocating a shoulder. But that means we're ready for laying up the latex layer. 
So this is a latex rubber uh, tinted with acrylic paint to get that sort of beigey browny base color, which I touch on later on in the video, which is important. And I'm brushing up each half individually because this mold has a whole lot of detail. So I can get into all those nooks and crannies and make sure that we don't have any thin spots. Uh, what I will do then is join the whole mold together and brush up along that seam, thickening up and filling in any gaps. And also I spilled a whole lot of latex on the bench like a fuckwit and waste not, want not. I'm going to dip my brush into that and use it for the layout. Tops. Now that the latex has been freed from the mold, it's time for Connell Cochran's favorite part of the process, final processing. I'm gluing a zipper into the back of the mask, as you can see there. And now my camera decided to go out of focus for the rest of this, but it's basically just the start of the paint up. Hello, so welcome to the workshop. Now you've just watched a bunch of time lapse of me painting up this uh, bad boy here. And uh, I will say that there's going to be a big section of that paint up missing. That's due to a couple of reasons. Uh, one is the way that I work. I like to work very quickly. Uh, I will pivot on ideas very, very swiftly if I believe something's not working properly. And I think uh, with the paint up, you would have seen it start off with the natural color or the tinted color of the latex, uh, which was quite a bright uh, burnt sienna red, and then pivot to a much darker brown and build up colors from there. Normally, I would try and tint my latex to match whatever the base color of my piece is or needs to be. And I didn't do that necessarily with this Jason. I had uh, decided to use a burnt sienna that I like to use on a lot of my stuff, a real lot of my stuff. And it turned out to be just a little bit too bright. So I've gone through and done several other layers of paint over the top of this. Uh, and we can show you a little bit here. We've got all of our bone work done. Uh, we've got the gashes and everything. I painted in with some gloss just to give some contrast. Uh, and uh, we have the overall flesh tone done. Uh, everything's highlighted and detailed exactly how I would like. I'm actually really happy with how this is looking so far. We've got a few little touch-ups to do. Uh, I am actually going to cut this eye out larger. Uh, it does have the eye lid or the eye, yeah, eye lids, I guess, sculpted in there so that eventually if I do want to make a bust version of this, I can stick an acrylic eye in through the back and it'll work quite well. But this is going to be a wearable one. So I want to have this opened up a little bit more so it sits closer to my face and there's not an eye within an eye, which looks kind of weird. From this point here, I've got a couple more paint touch-ups to go and then I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to hit it with a coat of clear Plastidip. Uh, Plastidip Glossifier, I think, is the one that I have. But I'm going to try and keep this sort of a matte uh, finish. Um, it'll be a little bit glossier, but I will then go in with my gloss medium, which is floating around here somewhere. I'll go in with my gloss varnish. Uh, this is uh, Atelier, I don't know. It's some acrylic gloss medium. It's really, really nice. I like to use this on a lot of my stuff to get some contrast. So I'm gonna go in, in areas like the mouth, in the nose, around the eyes, all of the bone and all of these gashes and try and get just a little bit more of a contrasting sort of shine to that. So a really, really wet look shine in all of those grooves. And then the rest of this will have sort of a, a satin finish over the top. I'm going to go and do my final little touch-ups on this and then smash out some spray paint on top and we should be ready for the final reveal. We're very close. Now I do apologize for the commentary over most of that. Really, I just set up a camera and let it time lapse. So hopefully that gave you an idea on the process of this. Now, to give you some final thoughts on this one, uh, this is one of my favorite pieces that I've sculpted uh, in quite a while. In fact, I'm really, really proud of the details and then the ease of actual wearability for this. It's, it's pretty comfortable. So I'll give you some one shots quite at the end but I'm gonna go through and talk about some of the details that I really enjoy about this. So first and foremost, uh, 
With latex masks, I like to have a little bit of a closure at the back. Unless it's something like a Michael Myers mask where it's designed to be open at the back, I don't like having big flaps of latex just sort of flapping around at the back. It means that they can pop out of the shirt. It means that they don't look quite as finished. It doesn't hold the shape of the head together. You can get the weird bulldog neck. There's a lot of reasons I don't like that. So as I mentioned in the video, um, we do have a zipper in the back of this. Now this is just contact adhesive in the back, as you saw. Uh, it's just a standard dress zipper and it just goes the length of this slit in here. This allows me to close the back of this fairly well. You do still see a line, but at least it's not like hanging out and looking kind of weird. Uh, just allows the shape of the head to be retained and makes it look just a little bit more like it should. We do have ear holes punched. So these little socket pieces here, part seven Jason doesn't have ears, but these little socket pieces here do have a small little, I think it's a three or a six mil hole through the base of those. And they're quite well disguised because any of the low parts, any of the interior crevices in this mask are painted with a glossy black. And so that glossy black allows you to really hide a lot of those small little holes and inconsistencies that allow me to breathe and see and all of that sort of fun stuff. On the subject of breathing and seeing, I went through with that same tiny punch and I punched out a bunch of holes in this eye socket here. As it is solid latex, I wanted to be able to see out of it. I didn't want to have just a blocked off piece of vision. And so what I've done is the way that I sculpted it with a bunch of little indented half spheres or, or dots for lack of a better term, uh, it's really lended itself to me going through and just punching a bunch of holes in the eye section here. Once it's up against your face, it's very, very easy to see out, but it doesn't allow a whole lot of vision in. And because that's that glossy black paint through there, you really don't see that there's holes in there until you're right up against it. It just gives a bunch of texture. The same with the nose. The nose has a bunch of holes through the nostrils. And then in the corners of the mouth, so around all of the teeth, I've got that same sort of hole pattern just punched out as seamlessly and as disguised as possible, as hidden as I could to try and get that breathability through there without sacrificing the look of this. The paint up, uh, as you saw, I only showed you some of the paintwork on this and I did touch on that in a little video as we went. Uh, but this has been basically layering of colors until I got a look that I was happy with. And I really wanted this sort of muddy, brown, earthy, rotten texture and color for Jason. So we went through with that. We've got all of the lowlights are all shadowed in. We've got all the highlights painted. We've got the bone painting, as you can see on there, which is just a combination of acrylics. And then the whole thing's been bulletproofed with that clear coat of Plastidip clear coat, a glossifier. It is starting to rub as I've been playing with this for a little bit. Uh, it's starting to rub on the high points and any of the areas where the hockey mask sits. So that will happen over time and I'll probably have to touch that up. But I'm willing to forsake it for this purely because it gives me that nice sort of semi-gloss. It's not quite a satin finish, but it gives a really nice semi-gloss finish. And the flakiness just really adds to the gooiness here. As you can see, uh, the eye has been cut out significantly. Now I did do some photos of this that I've posted online. Uh, so if you follow me on socials or on places like the RPF or michaelmyers.net, you will have seen this already. And it did have a, a plastic acrylic eye in there and it had the eyelids. My idea whenever I sculpt something like this is if I want to be able to use it to do something like a bust, like my part 10 Jason up there, I really want to have that ability. I don't want to have to try and sculpt in an eye socket or anything like that. So I did sculpt it with the eye details in there, which helps with proportions as well while I'm blocking stuff out. Uh, but the ultimate idea was to cut that out so that it sits right against my eye. There'll be a little bit of padding in the back of the head. It'll sit right against my eye. I'll do some black makeup around my eye and I won't have to look through another set of eyelids as I wear it. It's gonna make things a little bit more comfortable. Now, the moment that you've all been waiting for, I'm sure, is to see how this looks with a hockey mask on. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna put the whole mask on so you can get an idea on how this sits. Uh, as this is on a foam head, and as soon as you put a hockey mask on it, it squishes and distorts everything. So his cheeks go really, really wide, and it doesn't look amazing. But I'll chuck the whole thing on, maybe not with a full costume, but we'll throw this on and you can have a look at how the whole thing looks with the hockey mask on, and the movability, and the breathability, and how nice it actually looks.
you can see, I've put in a whole lot of work to this, and it'd be a shame to just have it as a mask. So, officially, I am going through, and for Brisbane Oz Comic Con, I'm going to do a Part 7 Jason costume. That is the full costume, complete with shredded shirt and pants, whole lot of gooey skin and bone exposed through the bottom of it. I'll probably have to do lifts, because honestly, like having a Bilbo Baggins height Jason Voorhees, it's not really that intimidating. Uh, but I will be wearing this mask, I will be wearing the absolutely brilliant hockey mask with it, and I'll probably work out a really nice Part 7 weapon to go with it. So there will be a full costume build on this channel. If you'd like to see that, I'm, I don't really give a shit. I'm going to do it anyway because I want to do more latex stuff. It, it's been fun to get back into this, and I'm really excited to do a really gnarly horror costume, do something that's full and creepy and gooey and oozy, and hopefully once we do that full costume, we'll get some shots out in the woods terrifying some campers. It's going to be rad. Thanks very much for watching, guys. I know this is a bit of a long one and something different from what I normally do. I really hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, I hope it's given you a bit of an overview. I know it's not a full tutorial, but this was never intended really as a full tutorial. This was a come along into the workshop while I work on things and uh, see how I do things and see how these things are made because I know it's a little bit of a weird one and a lot of people are like, they want to get into this sort of stuff, but there's not a lot of tutorials and not a lot of material online that shows how people do things. As I said through the sculpting portion, there's a lot of personality in, and personal choice in how you sculpt. My best advice is to just buy some clay, just some cheap plasticine, a cheap set of tools and start working from there. You don't need high quality clay, it does help. You don't need high quality tools, they do help. But I mean, I started with just cheap plasticine and a plastic knife and a plastic fork. You can start real simple and then work up to what you need and work out how you prefer to work and how you want to make things and the sort of things that you want to make. And that's a really good way to start. If you like this video, please do share, subscribe, like, gingerly touch my like button, otherwise Jason's gonna come and uh, he's gonna do the stabby and the slicey and the, the bits. I do not make these to sell, unfortunately, like all of my stuff. Uh, this is a personal project, I'm not gonna sell blanks or anything like that. But feel free to comment if you really like it, if you like how it looks, I'd love to hear that people really appreciate seeing something like this. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and until next time, uh, don't go out in the woods today, you sure for a big surprise.